Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing dysplasia. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be posting brand new educational content every single day. Your support really means a lot to us and just hitting the subscribe button helps our company. Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing dysplasia. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube account because your support really means a lot to us. We're posting brand new content, educational content for your examinations every single day. So with that being said, let's just dive right into it and let's talk about cellular adaptations and how they relate to dysplasia. One thing you got to remember is that our cells are constantly under a lot of stress because of the environment that they are in. And the simple example or the most basic example I have for this is your stomach lining. Your stomach lining is constantly being exposed to hydrochloric acid, which is a very acidic environment, right? And therefore, our cells in that environment have developed cellular adaptations in order to survive and thrive so that our stomach acid doesn't corrode through our stomach and go into our abdomen. Now that is at the cellular level. When we're talking about organs overall, we need to remember that our organs are generally in a state of homeostasis and they're able to maintain that state of homeostasis by changing their structure and their size in order to adapt to the stress that's being placed upon them. That's very important because the type and severity of the stress is going to uh, cause the, a specific type of change, okay? That's very important to remember. Now, an increase in the stress is going to lead to the growth of an organ occurring because this is essentially the adaptation our body has developed that we are able to adapt by growing our organ to better accommodate for that stress. There are two main types of growth adaptations, and those are hypertrophy and hyperplasia, both of which we've discussed in previous videos, and both of which are very high yield for your examination, so you should definitely know them very well. Now, that is in terms of growth, right? So what happens when you take the stress away from an organ? Well, our body, like we said right here, uh, our organs and our body are in a state of homeostasis. So therefore, if you take away the stress, our organs are going to go back to normal size. And that happens through atrophy. Atrophy allows for homeostasis of organ growth to occur. It allows for our organs to shrink back to their normal size. And this is a topic we have discussed as well in our previous videos, and it is also very very high yield, so you should definitely understand it in depth. Now, another pathway our organs can go through is changing the type of cells in that organ, and that is called metaplasia. And that's another type of cellular adaptation in order to adapt to the stress being placed upon an organ. That is another video that we've already made, a topic that we've already discussed, and you should definitely watch that video because it is also high yield. All right, so that is the, the three main types that we've already discussed so far. Now, what happens when metaplasia constantly occurs? Well, with constant metaplasia, you will see dysplasia, and that is what we're going to talk about in this lecture. So what is dysplasia? Dysplasia is abnormal growth or development of cells, and it occurs because of disordered cellular growth. That is the main two things you need to remember. Okay, because if you are asked what really is dysplasia, you need to remember that it is disordered abnormal growth of developing cells. Now, usually this is a precancerous lesion and the proliferation can progress onto cancer. And it usually arises from long-standing hyperplasia or metaplasia. So let's pause for a second and let's talk about this pathway. Let's say you have a normal cell, okay, or a normal organ and you put some stress on it, okay? This is all stress being placed upon an organ. All right, so there's two or three things our cells can go through. Number one, it can go through hyperplasia, okay? And if you watch our previous video, hyperplasia and hypertrophy usually occur together. There are some exceptions, which we're not gonna go into right now, but usually it'll go this way, or it can go to metaplasia. Now, if that stress is not removed, okay, this can progress to dysplasia. And if continuously placed under a lot of stress, this will lead to cancer. Okay, this is the pathway you need to remember. Now, from dysplasia, from metaplasia, and from hyperplasia or hypertrophy, we can go back to normal, uh, normal function, normal structure. If 
this is uh, if the stress is removed. Now, normally, the, if the stress is removed, especially in metaplasia, for example, in Barrett's esophagus, you can regress back to the normal lining, or you can regress back to the normal normal type of uh, situation, right? But if the stress is not removed, especially when it comes to dysplasia, it's going to progress to carcinoma, and carcinoma is irreversible. Very, very important. Once you progress forward, it is irreversible. You cannot go backwards, okay? So dysplasia can be reversed, but if the stress is not removed, you're going to see carcinoma, which is a type of cancer, essentially. So one example you need to commit to your memory that we're going to close up this lecture with is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, also known as CIN. This is a very high yield topic. This is a very high yield subject that you're going to see over and over again. We're going to talk about this in this lecture, in our ob lectures, in our uh, 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 cancer lectures. But let me give you a brief overview. CIN or cervical epithelial intraepithelial neoplasia are a precancerous condition in which you have abnormal growth of cells that are occurring at the surface of the epithelium of the cervix, okay? Very, very important. This is going to be occurring in a position in a, uh, in a location called the transition zone. All right, transition zone. Now, again, we're not going to go super into depth. We're trying to talk about this pathologic condition in the context of dysplasia. Now, when it comes to CIN, they're usually classified as CIN 1, 2, and 3. Now, CIN 1 is also known as a low-grade neoplasia, and this type of dysplasia only will involve one-third of the thickness of the epithelium of the cervix at the transition zone. CIN2 is usually uh, involving two-thirds, and then CIN3 is a condition that has more than two-thirds of the epithelium. Now, this is a very good schematic that I like that I put in here that helps explain what is going on, right? So these types of conditions, CIN1, CIN2, CIN3, these are all display, dysplastic conditions, or these are dysplasias, okay? Which means they are reversible. You can take the stress off, you can remove the, the epithelium, and you can uh, change, essentially, the progression. What happens if you do not fix this condition? Well, it will progress into squamous cell carcinoma or invasive carcinoma, which can be dangerous, which can be deadly. And you can see this right here, the risk of progression, the risk of disease progressing and causing more systemic conditions to occur, causing metastasis to occur, increases as your severity increases. So the more you, uh, the, the longer you let the dysplastic lesion stay in the body, the longer the stress is being exposed to the dysplastic position or that dysplastic location, the higher the likelihood that you're going to end up de uh, developing a carcinoma, which is then irreversible. So when you get to this stage right here, you are not going to be able to reverse it and you have to go to more aggressive therapies in order to treat the condition. Obviously, this is very general because a specific condition will uh, include specific treatments. But the overall understanding is that when you have a dysplastic lesion, it can progress to a carcinoma, to a cancerous lesion, if not treated. So dysplasia is kind of the last resort, the last, uh, uh, the last safe zone, I would say, even though it's not a, a good position to be in, it's the last safe zone before it progresses to cancer. So if you can catch something at dysplasia, if you can catch something in that region or in the metaplasia uh, part of the pathway, you're going to be able to prevent cancer. And that's why we have all these screening tools, right? So that's why we have pap smears. We have all these tools now at our disposal with modern medicine to catch these precancerous lesions to prevent cancer from forming and, from, and to save lives. So that is essentially the concept of dysplasia you need to understand. A very, very important concept. If you guys understood everything here, you're going to be very well versed in terms of dysplasia and you're going to be able to get the more, uh, the harder questions and you're going to be able to understand the basic concepts really well. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. We're posting regularly new content practically every single day. And with that being said, thank you again, and we'll see you back here in the next lecture.